In this video, we're going to take a look at how to incorporate sprites and animate them or give the illusion of them being animated to make it look like they're actually moving or walking across the screen. So with a sprite sheet, you have multiple frames of a character. Here I have 12 frames of a character and this is to handle his walking animation. So you'll see I have DL, DR, DS, and the LRS repeat. So the DL means he's facing down, he's using his left leg. DR means he's facing down, using his right leg. DS means he's moving down or facing down, but he's standing still with his legs side by side. Same thing for the LL facing left, moving his left leg, LR facing left, moving his right leg, LS facing left, standing still. Same thing with the uh, right and facing up. When you have uh, your sprites, you wanna to go to project, you wanna scroll all the way down, sprite movement uh, properties or whatever you have called your program. It's the last option, it'll be properties. And when you do that, it'll actually bring you to this screen right here. What you're gonna do is you're gonna click on resources and you'll get a screen that looks just like this. You wanna change the strings, hit this down arrow, change it to images. You're gonna click on add resource, add existing file, and then what you can do is you can load in each frame of your character. Once you have that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put in a picture box. I have called mine PixChar, or pick char for picture character. And what you wanna do is, is this is very important. What you want to do is you wanna to go to size mode. And what you wanna do is when you find size mode for the picture box, you wanna change it to stretch image. And that way you don't have to use the actual image size of the sprite. Maybe your sprite image is very small and you wanna make it larger. Or maybe it's too large and you wanna make it smaller. My sprite images, which I found uh, online, um, they were larger than I wanted it to be, so I made the picture box smaller, and then now I can still use the whole uh, image. So what we need to do now is we need to start coding and get this guy to move around the screen and give the illusion that he's walking, and we need to do that by loading certain frames of our sprite while also moving the uh, picture box. Because what we don't want to do is do this, and this would be, I mean, it would be great or it would be good, but not great, is just to have the picture box move where he's always facing the same direction. Like if he's moving up, he'd be moonwalking backwards. And that's just not gonna look very good at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things we're gonna be uh, coding. So I already have some global variables. I have X to handle the X axis. I have Y, which is an integer to handle the Y axis, because we're gonna be positioning a new point for our picture box every time a key is pressed. We're gonna have steps as integer. The reason I have steps is I need to know, is he moving his left leg? Is he moving his right leg? Or is he standing still? And then I need the direction because when he stops moving, I want him facing the same direction. Also, if he's facing a different direction, I wanna know uh, which, if he's walking to the right, he should be facing to the right. Um, you know, we don't want any moon walking here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our steps equal to zero on form load and X and Y because we're uh, putting a new X and Y point in every time the key is held down, it's gonna reset to, uh, on the first key press, it's gonna reset, or it's gonna have the value of zero. We don't want our character popping up in the upper left-hand corner. So our left property of the picture box, we're gonna put into X to handle where he is on the X axis. The top property of our picture box is gonna handle the Y axis. Now let's actually uh, talk about what we'll be doing here. So that is in our form load. You're gonna click up here, and what you're gonna do is, you're gonna be looking for what's called the key down. And this is, um, it's in alphabetical order. I don't know why I passed it. And here I have something for key up, which we'll talk about uh, a little later. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use select case. And this is probably the best thing uh, to use. And that is because we're gonna be using WASD for our movement. Then we're gonna go back and add the up, left, right, and down arrow keys. This E dot key code, we have E as key event argument. So E is handling all the arguments. When we access the key code, we're talking about accessing the key from the keyboard. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do keys, and I have to select my key. So I'm gonna be using W. When I push W, the character is gonna be facing the up position. I'm gonna increment my steps, 
And here's why I'm incrementing the steps. I need to know, is he moving with the left leg or is he moving with the right leg? To do that, I can simply see if we're on an odd number of steps or an even number of steps. And I can do that using mod, which will give me a remainder. So if steps mod 2 equals 0, meaning if my step count divides by 2 evenly and I don't get a remainder, then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to change the picture. And my picture box was pick char. I'm going to do image. And I loaded all of them into my resources. He's going to be facing the up direction, moving his left leg. If it doesn't divide by 2 evenly, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move his right leg. So that's going to be facing up, moving his right leg. Now, that is what will handle changing the picture, but what I also need to do is actually move the picture box. So what we're going to do is, and I've already worked out the, ba the uh, bounds for mine. I didn't magically uh, know these numbers. So if y is greater than 10. So if he's greater than 10, I know he's still on the y-axis, still visible on my form. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to simply move him towards up on the y-axis by decreasing 20. As you move closer to the top of the form, the y value of the axis decreases. So that's why we're moving it 20 pixels. Now you can change this if you don't want him to move 20 pixels. I tried 5, 10, 20 I felt was about right, but you can change that to whatever you want to. Now we need to change the location of the picture box. And by doing that, we want a new point on the form, and we want to do x, y, and all that's going to do is move him as long as he's on the y-axis greater than 10, he's going to move to the new position. x will stay the same, but y will decrement by 20 pixels. Now if he's outside my bounds, or getting ready to move outside my bounds, I want to keep him in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do pick char location, but this time what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to do my new point, but what I'm going to do is actually set the y value to zero. So let's take a look at this and see how it works. So we're loading up our form here. We have our guy. When I push uh, ASD, nothing happens because we haven't coded it yet. But when I use W, you can see he stays, stays inbound. And every time I'm pushing that key, he is just staying uh, inbounds. And that will work out uh, all well and good for that. Now, um, I already have my key up, so you'll see him coming back to a resting position uh, in a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to fast forward and take a look at the uh, coding for the A key press or key down press, key down, D for key down, S for key down. So let's fast forward and take a look at that. Okay, so we've handled the key press uh, or key code event of W. So that is moving up. When we do case key A, meaning we're pushing the, down the A key on the keyboard, we are moving in the direction of left. And I, all my code's exactly the same. I'm checking the steps. He's facing the left direction using his left leg. He's facing the left direction moving his right leg if the step count is not uh, divisible by two. Now, it doesn't have to be left than right. It can be anything you want. I check the bounds to see if he's still on the x-axis. Is he still, well, he's going to be on the x-axis. Is he still visible on my form? As long as he's greater than zero, I can still see him. So I'll move him by 20 pixels towards the left on the x-axis. So what that I'm going to do is I'm going to update his point. If he is moving off the screen, I want to keep him there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update I'm not going to let him move by 20. I'm actually going to reset him back on the x-axis at point zero. We're going to leave that y value. So if he's in, like, say, the middle moving left, it doesn't uh, move him anywhere else. It gives him the illusion that he's trying to move against a uh, wall, if you will. Then I use uh, D, keys.d. That is for the D key down event. That means he's moving right. I load the appropriate pictures, and then I use my bounds. Now, the bounds that I have based on my size form is uh, 540. As long as he's within the bounds, I'll let him move wherever he wants. If he's going outside the bounds, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him on the x-axis at 540, as far right as he can go. I'm not going to let him move any further. And then we have our S uh, key down event. I load the correct pictures down left 
If it's not, if the step count isn't divisible by two evenly, then he'll be moving his right leg. I'll let him move on the Y axis towards the bottom of the screen by 20 pixels as long as he hasn't moved beyond uh, 290. Once he is no longer less than 290, he's moving out of the bounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna physically move the Y axis, his position to 290 to keep him there. Now what I did was I coded uh, out the key up event so you can see what it will look like. So here you can see it looks a little, a little jagged. Even when I move him, he looks a little it looks a little jagged. Having an extra frame is gonna do wonders. It'll make it look a little smoother. But when I move him, we can see the legs are alternating. The left leg, his right leg, his left, his right. But when he stops moving, nobody stands like that with their left leg or their right leg out. They always bring their leg back to center. Because our sprite sheet had a frame for that, we're going to incorporate it. And it's a sprite sheet that I found uh, online. The guy did a really amazing job. I love the sprites, the way they looked. Uh, he redid it for the, um, he made them for the Final Fantasy I, the original game uh, for the NES. So um, he did a great job and I love the sprites and it's a great game, so that's why I used it. So let's take a look at our key up event. So key down is what happens when we're holding the key down. When we let go, go of the key, both legs need to come back to center, and that's why we had this um, direction. That's why we had direction, because we set direction up, but we don't do anything with it. That is where the key up event comes into place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna uncomment this code. If direction is up, then what we're gonna do is, on the key up event, meaning let we let go of the key we're currently pressing, then we're gonna change the image. If the direction is up, he's gonna be facing up, standing still. If he's facing left and we let go of the key, he's, we're gonna load the picture facing left, standing still, same thing for right and down. So now by having just that extra frame, when we run our program again, you can see he's bringing that leg back to center and it looks a little smoother where before he was stuck. So we need to check our bounds, we can see he can't move out of the form for physically putting him back there. He can't escape. There's, there's just no escape for him. And that is just a simple, this is just a rough demo. We could fine tune uh, the location in those pixels if we wanted to, but this guy, he, you know, he's just moving around, having a grand old time. And if you push the key down, you can use a timer even to also increment steps. You can see it looks pretty smooth. Um, I'm very, I'm very pleased with that. Now you may be saying, well, that's great for W, A, S, and D, but I want to use the up, down, left, and right arrow keys. Not a problem. You don't even need to copy and paste. And that's why I'm a big fan of select case statements. Because when you're using select case, you can incorporate the same code for more than one case. So here I have case keys.w. Well, I can also do keys dot up. And what that means is, when every time I press the up arrow key, it's gonna do the same thing. Down here, case keys dot A, I'm gonna put in a comma. This will also run if I do keys dot left, meaning I push the left arrow key. So then, I'm gonna come right down here for D, keys dot right, and that is for the right arrow key, and then, Right down here for down, I'm gonna do keys dot down. And now when I can use, uh, I can use my arrow keys or I can use W, A, S, or D. It is that simple. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please post a comment below. But if you found it helpful, uh, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to help our channel grow. We'll see you guys in the next video.